You're I'm like like, oh. a, like a doe. <laughs> a doe. A doe. A deer. A female deer. <laughs> Welcome back to Dear Shandy listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I'm feeling very base. Yeah. <laughs> Andy had a late night last night. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear it. I did. Wow. Very That's, base. It's actually pretty cool when it happens to you. <laughs> when it you happens like it? to me, it just stresses me out. But when is it happens it, to you. Does it turn you on? It's kind of sexy. Nice. I, I mean, I like your low-ish voice, but this is like next level. Yeah, you're going to get a full Q&A worth of low voice. Okay, excellent. And we'll see what, whether or not the Shandy's like that. Okay, speaking of Shandy's, we are answering their A's. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Off to a great start. Yeah. We are aing their cues today. Yes. Shall we get going? Let's. All right. This first question is from B as in the letter. Dear Shandy, first off, I just adore your podcast. The dynamic between you both is beautiful. Andy is hilarious and Charlene's laughter at his jokes makes me even happier. Oh, thank you, Aww. B. It's cute when people are into my laughter. It is cute. Versus the people who are like, stop laughing. I'm into your laughter. I bought into a lifetime of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> a lifetime. <laughs> Not bad for a hungover Andy. <laughs> I find the advice you give to be well thought and practical, and I always take something away, even if the question doesn't seem to apply to me. I am a recently separated 37-year-old female from a fairly large city in the Canadian prairies, at least fairly large by Canadian standards, that I know at least Charlene will be visiting soon. <laughs> The separation was not initiated by me and came as mostly a shock, but that's not directly why I am writing. Recently, as part of supporting me as friends during a stressful and sad time, a group of us arranged a girl's weekend trip to a destination city in the mountains about an hour away from where I live. One of the activities we booked was a food slash cultural walking tour. I love this idea, by the way. Going to a nearby city, like an hour away, and doing all these tours. Oh, yeah, we should do that. We should. Yeah. You <laughs> can't get over your voice. <laughs> we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> we should, though. I love that. It's sort of like a hybrid staycation yeah. thing. Let's do more of that. As soon as the tour guide met us, I knew he was exactly my type physically to a T. T? She wrote T E E and then a capital T in brackets with a question mark. I think it's, is it a capital T? I think it's a T, just a T. Like I don't know the, why the that is. T. I don't know either. You know who will know. <laughs> the Shandies will know, but I love that she put both options. She was covering her bases. Yeah, why not? The tour started off a little awkwardly. He admitted at the end that he was worried we weren't laughing at his first few jokes, but I had such a good time, such in all caps. The guide was personable, funny, and attentive. We had some great banter back and forth about how I had already taken my friends to one of his stops and that he was worried from the get-go because of my email address, question mark, mm. that we were actually from his town, so harder to impress. He genuinely made me laugh, and I felt he laughed with my jokes as well, something missing in my last relationship. Mm. He was able to be self-deprecating, say whatever funny things seemed to fly into his mind and seemed to appreciate or at least actually laugh at my sarcasm at the same time. We seem to share similar interests in food and local culture. He pointed out a couple of non-tour things and I commented that I had noticed those as well in the days before. We emailed back and forth a couple times after I got home with some follow-up questions and again it was super friendly with lots of banter but nothing more. We did not discuss relationships at any point in person or via email. This was a month ago now, and I am still thinking about him. Some light social media stalking suggests that he does not have a girlfriend or partner. He did mention a past girlfriend, so I assume he is straight, and he would be just a couple years older than me, right in my ideal age range. I am not ready to fully jump into a new relationship so soon after my marriage ending, but something starting as long distance could feel comfortable. His city is somewhere I would consider moving to in a couple years when I am no longer tied to where I currently live. Should I reach out and shoot my shot? My brain tells me, what do I have to lose? As it is, I will never see this guy again. The Andy in my head says, if he was interested, he would have already pursued this. Is there the potential for something to happen between us or should I just put it out of my mind sincerely be? She's got to do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Is there a real question here? <laughs> Yeah, to me, this one's really clear. And you guys know by now that I tend to put what I consider a no brainer question or what I, you know, an easyish one. B, it's not a diss on you. I think it's really sweet how you're deliberating so much. I think a key thing, you know, she talked about how you would say he would have pursued you by now. No. He was in his workplace. He'd be uh, ostracized from the whole tour community. <laughs> He's that creepy tour yeah. guy that hits on women afterwards. Yeah, he'd be a pariah. Yeah. No, I don't think he's able to make a move on you. And the fact that they, I don't know, I, if she feels this, I suspect he's feeling it too. I give this like 80% chance of success. Oh, of him of responding him in kind. Yeah, biting the hook. Okay, 80%. What about 80%? Tour I- guides, <laughs> they like girls. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> also versus, say, a personal trainer. We've talked about this right, before, right. about the personal trainer, how it's in their best interest to seem single, even if they're not, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know their clients kind of want to date them or yeah. have these sort of mini the crushes on them. The tour guy doesn't have an MO like that. No. He's just giving tours. He's giving one tour. It's not like a repeat business situation, yeah. like you're coming to see me every week for a different yeah, tour. Of course. You yeah. know what a tour guide is? It's kind of like a poor man's comedian, but not a poor comedian. <laughs> It's like a teacher of sports in high school. Well, actually, you know, the comedian one, as much as it sounds like an insult, it's not because a comedian is only like really funny the first time with those same jokes. Yeah. The second time around, it's not going to be like you need to get a new set of jokes. Right. You're not going to laugh as hard the second time at the exact same joke. Right. Correct. So I can kind of see the comparison. Yeah. Like this I mean, is a one time deal. You yes. think that tour guides have different jokes every time they give a tour? Mm-hmm. They're waiting. They're like they're <laughs> salivating at that opportunity to drop their joke. Yeah. And they have placements. Yeah. So look, he's basically it's like going to a comedy club. And the comedian comes up and says hello. And then you, you know, you give him your number and that's the end of that. Yeah. I think it's clear what we think here. Yeah. B, go for it. You never know. He might have a girlfriend. Maybe he's not interested, but, you know, you sh- you shot. You're shot. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> she gets a free tour out of it. All right. B, good luck. I do not think you need it. All right. This next question is from A, as in the letter. Ooh, we have a ba so far. Nice. You think we're going to get a D? Dear Shandy, first off, I just want to say that I absolutely love your podcast. Thank you, A. I remember watching Charlene on The Bachelor and finding it so exciting that there was some Asian representation that was greatly lacking in the franchise and quite frankly still is. I would agree with you, A. I love your take on relationship dynamics and also find myself laughing out loud at your banter. How nice. My question is regarding a guy I've been seeing for the past three months. Let's call him G. G got out of a serious relationship, was going to propose to her, it was serious, roughly six months ago that did not end on good terms. Long story short, he was accused of something he did not do and therefore felt like he was wronged and that his entire life was ruined by this accusation. Ooh, I feel like there's stuff to unpack there. His entire life. Yikes. He holds a lot of anger towards her and the whole situation, and it often makes me wonder, will he get over her? G and I have been exclusively dating and have agreed not to put a label on our relationship as he has voiced that he is afraid of getting into a relationship too quickly post-breakup. I'm sorry, I already have an issue with this. She puts relationship in quotations, but she says we've been dating exclusively. If you're dating exclusively, how are you not in a relationship? Yeah. It's just semantics. There shouldn't be quotes around the relationship. It should be an unquoted relationship. Yeah. I mean, even if she said, she said not, they didn't want to put a label on it, but they're dating exclusively. Like this, they're together. That's like saying, I don't want to put a label on a banana that says it's a banana. (laughs) Dole. Dole. Is Is there any other, like that really is Chiquita. Chiquita. Oh, you're right. Chiquita. In fact, I think we have some Chiquitas right over there. We do. Chiquitas have really edged in on Dole. Dole used to, I think Dole used to control like 95% of the market. Yeah. And now Chiquita, you're right. She's, they're coming up. It's a, it's a Chiquita time. <laughs> to paint a picture of what our dynamic is like, we talk every day and see each other on average four to five times a week. I also got Still out of- Still not a relationship. <laughs> I also got out of a six-year relationship roughly six months ago, so I can completely understand wanting to take things slow. Okay, so Mm -hmm. they're in the same boat. He has voiced to me that he feels anger and resentment towards her and wishes he did not feel this way. I guess my question is this. 
Does holding on to feelings of hatred mean that he is going to take a long time to get over her? Is the opposite of love truly indifference? Thanks for reading my email, and I hope it wasn't too confusing. Sincerely, A. P.S. He is 32, and I am 30. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Are you too hungover for this one? Yeah. I'm going to allow my wife to uh, take this. I actually do think the opposite of love is indifference. It's not hate. I do agree with that as well. Yeah. Because I think hate and love are very intertwined. Yeah. And right now he still hates her, or, you know, which, and it sounds like he has his reasons. And her question is, will he get over her? That literally the title of the email is, will he get over her? Will he ever get over her? Mm. A, I think, yes, he will. But I'm, I'm not sure that it's going to happen on her watch. It's still too Ooh. soon to say. Do you know what I mean? On her watch, meaning it's going to happen in his next relationship? I just feel like it's still early. You know, they've been together for three months. They both got out of big, serious things six months ago. So you think this is a rebound? Not necessarily. It's too soon to say. But the fact that they're seeing each other four to five times a week and are exclusively dating but not willing to call this a relationship. I think, well, I know he'll get over it. Oh, yeah, he I will. Know. Everyone gets over everything eventually. Yeah. Whether or not that happens while you're with him, A, I cannot say. It seems to me also like this may not happen during her tenure with him. Maybe if she had a paragraph in here about how special what they have is. But the fact that they haven't called it a relationship yet is weird because clearly it is a relationship. So that's kind of the elephant in the room. Like, why are we not calling this a relationship? Yeah, What's the problem? To me, it feels conspicuous that they're both going out of their way to not call yeah. it a relationship when it's obvious. Like, to be exclusive. To me, the exclusivity is what makes this a relationship. It's not how soon or long it is after they broke up. You can date someone for 10 years and start dating someone the next week. Yeah, and get and, married. And if it's exclusive, you're in a relationship. Yeah. And I suspect this is led by him he voiced that he is afraid of getting into a relationship too quickly post breakup I, I don't buy that i never buy any reason almost any reason on earth mm. to deny love like love conquers all i mean it's cheesy but mm. it's totally true nothing yeah. gets in the way of true love mm. You climb mountains. You, oh, you, Andy. <laughs> let's see. What else can I think about here? <laughs> you dig very deep holes. Uh, okay. Okay. No, you don't do that. No, no. you don't? No, you, you don't dig holes. Dig holes is a bad analogy. <laughs> Why would you dig holes? You wouldn't dig a hole. Like somehow your, your love is trapped in the center of the earth. Oh, man. It's possible. Yeah. Maybe she's buried. Oh. There's, there's a bury, a burying situation. Okay. Yeah, you like could dig holes. A buried alive. I mean, if you're going to climb a mountain for love, it stands to reason you would also dig a very deep hole for love. Uh, you, you dig an equally deep hole as the height of a tall mountain. That is a very, very deep hole. I mean, that's a great love story, actually. Imagine a, a tale of a man who just knows his, his true love is somewhere like way under the earth. She mm. lives in like a cavern in the middle of the earth and he just spends his whole life digging a hole and everyone's like, wow, this is the deepest hole anyone's ever dug. And then at the end, he, he, he finds out that she's not really there at all. <laughs> it's just totally nuts. <laughs> He's totally nuts. <laughs> I got to say, as unpleasant as it sounds to climb the highest mountain for love, I would much rather do that than dig a very deep hole. Oh, no question. So <laughs> maybe right. digging a hole is uh, even more effort to find love. Okay. So I guess our point is we think this is a relationship and we find it suspect that he's not willing yeah. to call it that. I would be so thrilled if I got out of a tragically horrible situation with someone mm. and then I found someone else who I fell in love with. Mm. I would forget about it in two seconds. Well, so that's the thing. To me, there's two pieces of this that make me question whether or not it will happen on her watch. And it actually has nothing to do with her question about like, just holding on to hatred mean it's going to take this long, blah, blah, blah. It's the fact that they're going out of their way to not call this a relationship, even though it is exclusive. It's been three months and they're in a very similar timeline situation. And the fact that it is still that active, the hatred yeah. is that active. It's hot. It's hot. Usually if you really get something new and shiny, it really helps to speed up that process. We'll put yeah. it that way. Yeah. So a, uh, I think there's two things here. One is 
It's not a real relationship. This may be no, one of those. It is. I think it is. No, oh. no, no. It's not. It, it is. It's definitely a relationship. <laughs> okay. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's a relationship. You can call it whatever you want. Yeah. You know, call it a, a cupcake. It's a relationship. <laughs> okay. I don't care what they're calling it. Okay. But I don't believe in the strength of the relationship because mm. the rela- this relationship should be the medicine that cures him from his ills mm. of his previous relationship. And if it doesn't, the other possibility is that this guy is like, his life is ruined. Maybe she's right. Maybe his life is legitimately ruined to the point where he's unable to even find love, even if it's right in front of him, because yeah. he's so distracted and obsessed with his misery and his anger. Yeah. So that's possible. Mm. But I think that if this was a good relationship, this would have cured him. Mm. And I do think it's possible it could graduate to medis- medicinal status. Yeah. You know what I mean? It could graduate to the point where it cures him. But to me, I'm still a little hung up on the unwillingness to call it a relationship. Yeah, I think she's got to think about that. I think A has got to think about why is this not a relationship? Mm -hmm. Who's driving that? I get the vibe that if he was like, let's make this official, like we're in a relationship. I kind of get the impression she's just being easygoing. A, I'm sorry. We've totally, I'm that, yeah, I always do this where I'm like, I don't want to cast doubt on the relationship because we could be way off base. We could totally be way off base. Yeah, We're, we're, We're being a little judgmental, I think. Yeah, but we it's can a, but it. it's okay. Like we, you know, you asked us a question. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Good luck. A. N U T R A F. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's not enough letters in no. neutrophil. <laughs> yeah, that's something you might have, you know, maybe put a few seconds of thought <laughs> in before you did. I just dove in head first. Yeah. I did not think that through. Respect the jingle. Respect yeah, I'm the sorry. I, I do not possess your jingle talents, Andy. But okay. Nutrafol deserves a jingle. It does. Because we love Nutrafol. I really do. And I know it's working. I have noticed a difference. Sometimes I wake up and I look at my head and I say, that's not the head of hair a man my age should have. <laughs> Nutrafol has really made a big difference because there was a period of stress you had. People, I think, yeah. have heard me tell the story, but in case there's anyone new, I first discovered Nutrafol at an influencer event. I yeah. was gifted some in this like big gift baggie and I brought it home and you tried it out and you liked it. But then, you know, we we didn't buy it. Like, like time went by and then you went through a period of stress yeah. and you felt like your hair was thinning it due was. to the stress. No, no question. Yeah. And so that's when we were like, oh, like that Nutrafol stuff, you liked that. Let's yeah. get some. And this is, by the way, it was before Dear Shandy ever came around. And so then you got the Nutrafol and noticed a difference after yeah. a couple of months. I've seen, I've gone to two different dermatologists mm-hmm. in the office. And I know this isn't like the be all and end all, but in the office, there are Nutrafol yeah. signs yeah. up. Yeah, can you... <laughs> <laughs> no, signage, there's Nutrafol signage. Is that, I didn't signs know how to say up. that. Signs up. Signs up is really bad. Really eloquent. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> and Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth by targeting the five root causes of hair thinning. Andy? Stress, hormones, nutrition, environment, and metabolism. Very good. And stress. I mean, it's one of the five. And it really did work that way for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Real bad. And in a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. That's a good number. That is a very high number. For something that is relatively hard to really track. You know, that's a really high number. Last time I checked, there is not a 0.6 of a human. So you can round that up to (laughs) nine out of 10 people. (laughs) So you can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering promo code Shandy to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code Shandy. Andy, you're looking very casual chic over there in your fairy button down. Most comfortable button down I have. It really is. I love the material. It's somewhere between a flannel and a button down and a sweater. Yeah. And it's squishy soft. Yeah. I really understand what squishy soft means mm-hmm. now. It also doesn't wrinkle easily. I love that you, like, it's a great shirt to travel with. You throw it in your suitcase. I'm not sure it wrinkles ever. Faraday just makes the best stuff. Their stuff is so high quality. I love that it's a family owned business mm-hmm. and you can just tell that they care. They care so deeply that no matter how much I try <laughs> to cause damage to this shirt, <laughs> And I do try. (laughs) Yeah, you're not the best at looking after your clothes. And so it really shows when an article of clothing is not good quality. And Faraday, they care about quality so much. And this is insane. They have a lifetime warranty on 
every item of clothing they sell. They'll repair or replace it for free for life if anything goes for wrong life. with it. Can you think of one other brand that does that? Think about all the fast fashion in the world. Can you imagine any of them gu- having any kind of guarantee on their clothes, let alone a lifetime one? You know what? They make such durable and high quality clothing that they're dicks. <laughs> I gotta say all my Faraday pieces are so freaking versatile. They go with each other and also everything else in my wardrobe. And it's just the land of classic basics that you'll wear over and over again. But also they have some fun statement stuff too. Like I have this fun one piece boiler suit. I also have a maxi button down dress that I wear with a belt. Their stuff's just great. And it is the holidays. We know Faraday would make a great gift. It is a festive type of gift <laughs> it is well they have a lot of like plaids and like cozy of, yeah like isn't yeah. everyone getting plaid shirts for christmas yeah i feel like their stuff is very festive i love it yeah it's a good gift right now for the holidays Faraday is giving dear shandy listeners a whopping 20 percent off every order you heard right you get 20 percent off your order head to faritybrand.com slash dear shandy and enter promo code dear shandy at checkout that's code dear shandy at Faraday f-a-h-e-r-t-y brand.com slash dear shandy for 20 percent off. Faritybrand.com slash Dear Shandy. All right. This next question is from I have a crush on a bass player. Oh, wow. <laughs> what should we call I her? H A C O A B P. No, it doesn't work. Okay. We'll just call her bass player. Bass. How about just bass? <laughs> Okay. Is this is this like does my voice now sound like it like you 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 hang out with bass singers? Am I at that level yet or no? You're like bass baritone. Right. So what's it Don Giovanni? <laughs> Very good. This is pretty good. Yeah. That's is that is that the note? I don't think so. It's that's too high. I think so, but I'm not that's not my range, I'm not sure. Oh, I I might be able to get a little lower. <laughs> Don Giovanni. Good, good, good. Oh, that was that was very nice. That was like a low C, right? (laughs) Dear Shandy, hello. I am 27, an avid listener of your podcast, and have loved watching your audience grow throughout the years. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I have written in a couple of times with different dating dilemmas. I have many, LOL, and I can't wait for the day one of my emails gets chosen and I get to listen to your entertaining commentary and advice. Today is that day, babe. The day has come. (laughs) In this season of dating, I find myself struggling to date within my community. Specifically, my question is around how much consideration and empathy should I give to a jealous ex when it comes to dating people they know? She had a single quotation around that, so I kind of did this and then (laughs) faded. (laughs) Background. I work within the music industry, although I am not a musician. There are many challenges working within the industry. On one hand, being perceived as single has been really helpful. But on the other hand, it also invites a lot of criticism when it comes to who people judge me for hanging out with. I ward off a lot of men in this field and do my best to stay focused with my musical goals. I like that whole paragraph. Isn't it funny how that's so, like, I was just, for a second, I forgot that this, I thought this might have been a man. Yeah, because we, we, we named her bass. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't, yeah, my brain is too slow today yeah. to figure out that a bass is a woman. But um, you reading that and me thinking it was a man yeah. is like made no sense. I'm mm. like, why are people judging? It's such a double standard. Yeah, it totally is. Six months ago, I met a celebrity in a very meet cute way. It was a Saturday. I chose to take myself out to a jazz club on my own. This person that we will call Nate walked by said jazz club, spotted me and came inside in hopes of getting to know me. It's a meet cute story, but it wasn't romance at first. In fact, I blew them off specifically because I knew they were a celebrity. When they asked to buy me a drink, I told them that they could only do so if they bought drinks for the entire band as well. Ooh, wow, bass damn. has game. Oof. Damn. It's brutal. <laughs> too much game it's a, that's an expensive drink yeah i wow i'm into bass you that's know that's typical i would imagine a bass player doing that it's if a she's not a bass move. player she has a crush on a bass player it's a total misnomer but we're just rolling with it oh right it's she's... signed i have a crush on a bass player we should have just called her crush oh wait oh god see i'm now this screws it's up it's a everything. disaster it's a dis- okay oh, we're still calling I... her bass we're committing all right all right but what i love about this is how she took herself out to a jazz club on a Saturday night. Yeah, why not? It's not and lovely. look, 
it so looks happens. This is a good, you know, ad for get out there. Get out there, even if it's by yourself. Yeah. Fast forward a few weeks, and I think this person is my twin flame. I still think they are an incredible human. That twin flame connection died out quickly after a jealous experience towards the end of the summer. During this week of breaking up, I tried my best to be super empathetic to their experience and past traumas that made them react as such. Unfortunately, my efforts were futile because we ultimately broke up. That was very vague. Yeah. So it sounds like Nate became very jealous, maybe because of past traumas. I'm thinking the guy's Flea. That's the only bass player I know who's famous now. Flea? Who's not like really old. Was oh, the- no, no, no. But okay, no, no, no. Nate is not the bass player. Huh? We get to, we'll get to the end of the question. We'll get to the end. <laughs> You're so good. Why did you give me this question? <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. (laughs) Just let me get to the end. Since the summer, my career has grown and I'm working in circles that are closer and closer to theirs. So to Nate's. I am a single woman and I am serious about finding a meaningful connection. This past month, I've met a couple of people that want to pursue me and I have no reason to not pursue, except for the fact that I'm concerned about it getting back to Nate. When I talk to my guy friends about this, they tell me that the worst thing I could do is actually date someone who he knows because it would affirm his insecurities about me. This is a really helpful perspective and maybe the most helpful if I have intentions of getting back with him, but I don't. Mature conflict resolution is really important to me and I don't see a future with Nate because I don't think he has those skills. I still care about him though, so how much considerations should I give to his feelings? Do I risk looking like a hoe? and risk the bare minimum friendship we have now because I have really good chemistry with one of his colleagues and want to pursue that? Or do I just resolve that I have now lost privileges to this dating pool? Really look forward to hearing your advice. Sincerely, I have a crush on a bass player. Okay, so it sounds like the bass player is a colleague of Nate's. So Nate has a bass player in his band and his bass player is the one that she that wants she to get with. she has a connection with. I can't, it's wow. not super clear because she says I'm working in circles that are closer and closer to Nate's. I've met a couple people that want to pursue me. I'm concerned about getting back to Nate. Okay, so it sounds like they know each other. At first, the first time I read this email, I thought it was sort of like unclear, like they, might, they just might know each other. Yeah. But based on how that wrapped, I think that they work together. But... But is Nate she, and the bass player. Is she aware of the bass player because of Nate? Or is it just purely unrelated? Okay. You're, That's a big issue yeah, for me. No, okay. You're pointing out something I think very relevant here. Because if she was going to meet the bass player on her own, yeah. I don't think... This is not a big issue. That's just bad coincidence. Yeah. All is fair in love, right? Okay. So overall, your thoughts are, go for it. Yeah. Unless... Nate introduced her or she met this bass player only because of Nate. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying like a butterfly flaps and swings in Japan. And yeah, no, I'm saying like he literally was like, this is my friend, bass player, dude. Yeah. Or she wouldn't have met him in any circumstance in in the world had it not been for Nate. Yes. Maybe he didn't directly introduce them. Yeah. I don't think that's cool. And I think that's messy. Mm. And I think it's it's unfair. It's usually not worth it. It's not worth Once it. Once in a while, that ends up being your forever connection, in which case yeah. Nate was just like, you know. It, he was he was a casualty. Yeah. He was a casualty and, and, and it was like war. It's a direct parallel. You mm-hmm. have to, you know, you don't want to kill the guy, but you got to kill the guy to, <laughs> to, to win the war. Uh, yeah, I've done better than that. This is pretty weird. You're struggling today. It's cute. Yeah. Well. Okay. I but think my it, point is made. Yes. You gotta. You gotta break some eggs to make an omelet. <laughs> it takes one to know one. Okay. Rome was not built in a day. <laughs> Word travels fast. <laughs> okay. Bad news travels faster. Oh. I think that's a saying. Is it? Yeah, it's a good one. I it just, is a good if one. If I it's, made it up, it's good too. It, if you just made that up, that's amazing. It's too good for you to have made up in You're this right. state. I'm sure I've heard that before. You're right. <laughs> Even in a good state, it's too good. Yeah. No offense. No, I, none taken. Okay. I agree with you. I think that if she met the bass player through Nate specifically, meaning she never would have met him if it were not for Nate, I would tread very carefully, like make sure this is a real deal before you casually go into this just because. Yeah. Well, she's going to be the bad guy. 
Well, and it's also, it becomes a shitting where you eat situation. Yeah, it, yeah. I'm not even that hell bent on Nate's feelings. Like it kind of sounds like they had a tumultuous, like it was, you know, a very strong love, but it ended very messily. It sounds like, like it sounds like he has issues. We'll just leave it yeah, at yeah, that. Yeah. So I don't f really get the extreme loyalty to him specifically, but I'm starting to see this more as a shitting where you eat situation. I, this uh, is for industry. I agree with you. Yeah. You, you I just, agree with you. It's yeah. a definitely a shitting in the general vicinity of where you're eating. <laughs> yes. Like on the periphery of the eating area. Yes. At the very least. Mm -hmm. So she does, definitely does not play bass, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get that straight. She said at the top that she's not a musician. Not she, a musician. Yeah. Okay. So she has, but she has some relation to these people. Yeah. Yeah. Some she works capacity. in this industry. Yeah. Okay. So she's maybe she's like a, a manager or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think I th uh, just tread carefully, as mm -hmm. you said. Tread carefully. I would, if you just cannot resist, just make sure that it's not going to just be a, a fling that also ends messily and just yeah. starts to follow you. It's one of those things where if she has found who she really knows is her soulmate, mm -hmm. the love of her life. Yeah. You got to go for it. Yeah. You got, as you said, as I said, the great war analogy I made, which I'm still not <laughs> sure what was going on with that. But you got to You got to do some bad things to get love sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if it's not that, if it's just kind of like a curiosity where you're like, I like this guy, let's see where it goes. Oh, or I just want to sleep with him. I'm, I'm yeah, attracted to him. I, I, it's, just, I don't think it's worth I it. I would resist. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, it's funny. It's less about Nate's feelings than I think she was asking yeah, about. But I'm also incorporating that. And I think it's, it's a, it's a fair thing i don't like when people who are introduced to other people are betrayed by that introduction mm -hmm. you even talked about on the platonic uh, episode episode 181 yeah and also we have touched on it before too there was another q a i don't remember which one so i'll link it here it was where it was two female friends and then one of them was introduced to a guy by the friend and then secretly started dating him. Yeah. And when she told the friend after like way too long, like yeah, the yeah, friend yeah. kind of like faded yeah. on her, was upset about it. Yeah. And I could kind of feel for the friend a bit. Like it just sort of feels like a, a betrayal in that sense. So I do think if base, <laughs> you are going to pursue this. I do think that honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Like when you are sure, then maybe just try to cover your base, your yeah. bases. <laughs> nice. You know, um, base is an like has a lot of uh, homonyms. Is that what they're called? Homonyms. Yes. There's a, it's one of the most homonymed words. Yeah. Can you use homonyms in that? Hominum. Hominum. Hominimal. Hominimal. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a base. Like I think right off the top of my head, I can think of five bases. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It also makes English a bitch. English is a bitch. Yeah. There are no other languages with heavy homonyms. Really? That's a, I'm just making that up. I'm assuming that. <laughs> that's a base that's a that's a basic <laughs> assumption. All right, base. Good luck. I kind of feel like you need it. This is yeah. you're kind of you it's know, a tricky one. You're playing the game, Don't Break the Ice. Ooh. I love that game. I played that for the first time with you. Oh, yeah. You made it seem like that we was a game it. everyone played, but I'd never seen that game. We played it at Ease Bar, which is this yeah. bar near us that has board games. And How it's very funny fun. is it that we have that memory? Like, that wasn't a very eventful situation. Why do we remember that so vividly? I took a photo of it. And for me, Don't Break the Ice is a game I grew up with. Like, I, right. as a child, I played Don't Break the I Ice. I think, you know, what? It, you, the reason I remember it is was you, there was a lot of buildup from you. <laughs> like, you were talking about Break the Ice for like an hour before we played it. You kept, you wouldn't stop talking about Don't Break the Ice. Okay, good luck, base. Don't Break the Ice. So speaking of ice, that's going to be my segue into the next question. Ooh. This next question is from Anonymous. Okay. I love, okay, at the top, <laughs> I love our shandies. At the top, it says, this question takes about two minutes and 45 seconds to read aloud. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's not a bad idea because you would think I would be better by now at knowing. Yeah. Oh, and just an, a gentle reminder, bear length in mind yeah. because that actually is a, still a reason why a lot of questions are not chosen. Yeah, and a lot of really good questions come in that are so long. Yeah. And we, just can't, we can't do it. It and would there, take up a big chunk of the Q&A. That's actually happened several times where yeah. I was like, I would have chosen this if it were 50 to 75% yeah. the length. So. Yeah. Bear that in mind, Shandies. Is it? Are you not envisioning how cute it is that she's sat oh, in her room and I'm read the question with, with a timer? Oh, I'm already obsessed with her. Yeah, I think this is so cute. Either, she's either very, very cute or a sociopath. <laughs> Dear Shandy, 
I, 25 female, and my boyfriend, 35, met about nine months ago and have been exclusively dating for six months. I have lived with him for four of those months and it has been fun! Exclamation mark. He is thoughtful. He always writes me cute, witty notes. We share many hobbies and he listens very carefully. Oh, I love that that's one of the things she leads with. Mm -hmm. He listens very carefully. Mm, so important. Right? Because yeah. it's often, I don't want to belittle the other traits that you can list, but what she's showing in that is how he engages with her. It's not just like, oh, and he's an empathetic, smart, yeah. Yeah. charismatic person or whatever. It's one of the, I think it's probably the most important thing. It's like top three. Yeah. It might be top number one, honestly. Yeah, that's why I said it might be the most important <laughs> thing. Maybe I'm also hungover and I just don't know. It. And you're catching my hangover. <laughs> Well, imagine if it felt like a hangover was contagious oh, and like some guy gets super wasted and the whole neighborhood is hungover. <laughs> That'd be a great movie, actually. Secondhand. That'd be a bad it movie. It would be called Secondhand Hangover. I think it would just be called Hungover. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're fired. <laughs> okay. So, oh, him listening very carefully. For example, she gives, this is really cute. I mentioned the door startled me when he barges in after work, and now he politely knocks before coming in each time. Oh, this is getting cuter. I'm touched. Yeah. That's super sweet. Yeah, that's really cute. I really relate to Anonymous a lot, not only her reading her yeah. own question aloud to time it, but even that, like, I'm also very startleable. You really are. Yeah, like yeah. loud noises. I'm You're like, like, a, like a doe. <laughs> a doe? A doe, a deer, a female deer. <laughs> Oh, I'm resisting singing that right now. Mm, you can do it. Ray, a drop of golden sun. Dun, dun, dun. Me, a name I call myself. Far, a long, long way to run. So, a needle pulling thread. A plot, a note to follow so. Tea, a drink with jam and bread. That will bring us back to do, 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 do. And cue a one star review that says that we sing too much. <laughs> That was great. Yesterday, we got two back-to-back -back reviews. One said the thing they love most about our podcast is the singing, and the other one said the thing they like least is the singing. Is the singing. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Can't please everybody all of the time? Can't please? Is that how it goes? I think you can't please everybody. You can't please all the people all the time. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Mm. That has been one of my biggest lessons with this podcast, by the way. Okay, pertinent info. I have never really seen him get angry. He is even tempered and doesn't have mood swings. This is important to me as I was raised in a very unstable household with an alcoholic parent. So even mannered, no eggshell walking is a need. Though he did mention briefly to me that in the past, he has made the mistake of getting too angry too fast. I don't know about what exactly and didn't question it. The only thing I've witnessed was him getting very upset about about his car getting scratched. The incident. Mm. We play a game of tossing things at each other and yelling, catch. <laughs> Otherwise known as catch. <laughs> I was in the kitchen and got hold of an ice cube and tossed it to him. He was sitting on the couch and yelled his name. I tossed it a little too far and it landed right on his chest area and apparently startled the hell out of him. I genuinely did not mean for it to land on him, but on the cushion beside him. He looked at me with a face of anger that I had never seen before and immediately whipped the ice cube right back at me. It didn't hit me and Sorry, he laid... It's not funny. I mean, it's funny. It's... It's funny. Uh, it's not funny. It's not funny. But it, it's kind of funny. I, I'm not sure how I feel yet. Yeah, I, I, I need to hear the rest before I fully yeah. laugh. Yeah. He whipped it, the ice cube right back at me. It didn't hit me, and he later claimed he wasn't trying to hit me. He was just trying to get me back. This entire encounter made me very uncomfortable and on edge. He later approached me and apologized for his reaction after not speaking to me for a couple of hours. I accidentally startled him, and he immediately turned to anger and violence. He startles me all the time, and I don't have the retaliation mindset. I just express a feeling of discomfort and sulk for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I like that she knows that about herself. Yeah. I would have completely understood frustration or annoyance, but full-blown anger is different. I am so sad that this incident has me looking at him differently, and I am hoping you will say that I am overreacting a bit. He thinks it is done and over with, and I am still thinking about it days after. 
Question. Did I just catch a glimpse of a very negative trait that is going to continue to happen, or could this just be a one-off? Andy, have you ever been so startled by Charlene that you whipped something across the room in her direction? What if he was aiming at me, but because he missed, he could then claim that he wasn't aiming at me? Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Anonymous. Mm. Uh. I mean, I, I can recall, I don't remember exactly what it was, but you once did throw something at me without warning me that it was coming. Oh. And it hit me in the face. I don't Like, know. right in the front of the face. Oh, I'm sorry. And I and I have to say, like, my immediate, I did have a flushing of anger. Like, okay. I was very, I was, first of all, it was extremely startling and upsetting, and it kind of hurt. I was very angry. It was my immediate thing. I was just like, there was nothing funny about it to me. I was, I, I, I was beyond comedy. Oh, really? My instinct wasn't to throw it back at you. Okay. But I felt a lot of anger in the moment. Were we playing catch? But I think I got over it within like five minutes. Were we? I don't remember this. Were we playing catch or what was the... No, we were not playing catch. So what, why did I do that? I think it was just like you were being silly. Oh, yeah. I was like joking around. Yeah, yeah. And did I apologize? Oh, totally. You like were right profusely o- apologizing, but I wasn't, I wasn't like, oh, it's okay. I was more like sort of stewing for a second. <laughs> okay. I was just annoyed. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not, I really am not. It doesn't bother me that much yeah. at the moment. I'm just saying I recall one time she's asking me. Yeah, yeah. There was a time this exact kind of thing happened. Put it yeah, this it's way. actually very exact because she was also being goofy and silly yeah. when she threw the she, ice was, cube. This is the thing. Okay. Obviously, she did nothing wrong. There's no malice in it. Mm-hmm. It was a little sloppy because no one likes to get hit with ice when they don't know it's coming. That's not a good thing to get hit with. It's cold. It's wet. It's hard. Uh, I don't want to get hit with ice. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that he had to throw it back at her. But I will say this. There are times when something like that happens and you really have an un- comedic rage you're just you can't see it as funny or you can't see it as an accident yeah. you're just immediately enraged and you act out a little bit i don't think that past results indicate future results okay i think that this is probably a one-off but but i can i i can remember when i was in high school and they taught me how to do experiments how experiments were done and you have to have repeat results you can't just do one experiment and think that that's it it is interesting that the only other example she has of him getting really angry is when his car got scratched, which I would also be super angry about. I have mixed feelings about this. Okay, so if you had to color the flag that this is, would you say an orange flag, it's, a yellow it's, flag? It's a potential yellow flag. Okay. At the, I'm not giving this orange flag. Yeah. First of all, he didn't hit her. He said he tried to miss. Yeah. The rest of his behavior in this relationship seems extremely gentle and kind Mm -hmm. and considerate. Yeah. I love her specificity with that at the top. It really helps. If she just said we have a great relationship and then she said this, I'd be like, what? But, you know, her example of him just knocking before entering the house would suggest a a gentleness. I I, I think that the guy just doesn't like to be startled with ice in his chest. And that's reasonable. (laughs) She said that she saw a look of extreme anger on his face that she hadn't seen before. But that's what my point was going to be mm. is I think the real issue might be if I if I had to make this an issue which I don't really think it is okay. yet is that it's not the anger or the reaction that I'm worried about because I don't think this guy's a violent guy I don't get that feeling okay I think it might be the fact that he has the capacity to be deeply annoyed by her Ooh. And that's not a great thing to have mm, in a relationship. But know. that's a stretch. Yeah. To me, that's a stretch just because she hit him first with the ice cube. It's, you know, it's a very specific set of circumstances for her to, for him to become annoyed by her. And it's safe to say this will never happen again. Yeah. In fact, I would venture to guess that the game of catch has been completely exorcised from this relationship oh, by now. That's sad. But there is actually something that for me does make this yellow slash orange flag territory. It's the fact the stewing. that what the stewing him, him stewing how long it took him to get over it. Yes. Good catch. It was the fact that he later approached her and apologized for his reaction after not speaking to her for a couple of hours. Yeah, that's the issue. Like, I feel like this entire exchange should have been something that immediately after they should have been like, what the hell just happened? Like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like hit you on the chest. Uh, I didn't mean to throw that back at you. Like that was silly and stupid. And let's not play catch anymore. I, I, I completely agree. And that's why I brought up the annoying thing is that what that shows me, what this incident shows me is not that this guy 
guy is violent. Mm. I really, I'm sorry. I'm just not, I'm not going there. Okay. This is not a violent situation. Mm. The guy got hit with an ice cube. It's startling. It's annoying. He threw it back and, it, and not at her. That's just a sort of a gut reaction. Mm. I don't think that's a problem. But the fact that he was able to sit with that annoyance for that long yeah, and he, let it be, let it actually exist. He committed to the feelings, the emotions connected to throwing it back at her for hours. That's what I'm saying is he has the capacity yeah. to be very annoyed with her. And annoyance is is a real powerful destructor mm. of relationships. And I am slightly worried. I don't think it's a, a flag of any kind really. What I think it is, is a flag for the relationship. Mm. rather than a flag for him. I think that there is the slightest seed that has been planted that there can be times when he's really annoyed with you. I feel like he was stewing with anger. I don't know. That's what I get. Annoyance is, it's not really what I'm getting from this. I think anger immediately, but anger then became annoyance. Mm. You're not angry for two hours about getting hit with an ice cube. You're angry for a few minutes and then you're annoyed. That's what I think. Hmm. At least that's how I would be. No, that's, that's and, a good And if point. I, to be honest, if I was sitting around for two hours thinking about how annoyed I was at you for hitting me in the face with that thing you hit me in the face with, I think, I think uh, that wouldn't be our relationship. Like, I don't have the capacity to be annoyed at you for two hours about getting hit in the face with something that didn't injure me. I think the thing I threw at you was s relatively soft and light, but at, when thrown and hit in the face, it didn't feel soft. I think it was light. like a pillow or something. Yeah, I think you threw a, it was a, a pillow. pillow at me. And a pillow, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, first of all, soft as a pillow. <laughs> is, I don't. I don't buy into that anymore. Yeah. Pillows can be hard when when yeah. when projectile. Yeah, I just don't want anyone to think that I threw like a. a a baseball bat at no, your face. No, no, no. It was, yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> I'm circling back to defend myself because I was like, what the hell did I throw at his face? A pillow I can actually see myself doing like in a moment of being joking. It was a pillow or a piece of clothing? I think it was a throw pillow, which are denser than sleeping Dense. pillars. A throw pillow Pillows. should not be called a throw pillow. <laughs> I think you took that too literally. Oh, God. All right, so anonymous. Hmm. This is a deceptively tricky one because at a glance, you're like, oh, it's not a big deal. I agree. It's getting harder as we talk. Yeah. About the it. more I talk about it, the more uncomfortable I am. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> OK, I do think it says something that he was able to come to terms with the fact that he was wrong and he apologized. So he was able to take responsibility. I'm slightly concerned by how long it took, but I guess it's better than nothing. You know, it's not like she had to go and be like, aren't you going to apologize? And then he begrudgingly apologized. Like he apologized on his own after reflecting. I don't know if it's fair to assume that he did mean to hit her. With all the other data, we have to suggest he's a really good, caring, thoughtful boyfriend. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would sort of need a video of this ice throwing <laughs> incident. <laughs> it's like you have to break it down like the Kennedy assassination. Mm. The issue here is not the throwing of the ice. It's the reaction, as we've discussed. Yes. It's possible that he was triggered. The fact that he has the capacity to be that annoyed, angry, and or upset with her for that long amount of time over something pretty trivial. Yeah. I think, okay, ultimately, Anonymous, our advice comes down to what you said. In an experiment, you need to have repeated yes. results. Yes, yes. So, you know, you can put them on watch. If you want, we can agree at a yellow flag. Yeah, it's a, a yellow, it's, you know, it's like, it's like a warning flag. It's not even a flag. It's not even an official flag. Yeah. It's like a war. It's like, it's like, oh, wait, a flag is a war. That, that is a, <laughs> yeah, okay, a forget war. it. I would say that if this repeats again and soon. Oh, it's full blown red flag territory if yeah, it happens again. Yeah. With anything. With, with anything. Yeah. Because I mean, I've, I've never thrown another pillow at you. <laughs> You learned your lesson. <laughs> oh, I got over it fast because I knew you didn't mean it. Yeah. Why should I be angry? It was sloppy. Yeah. You, know, you could have probably maybe aimed better. <laughs> <laughs> it's really about your aim, which I have an issue with. Okay, Anonymous, good luck. I feel you need a small amount of luck here because I think a lot of this is mainly data collection. Yeah, you should really hope that this doesn't happen again. Yes. Because if it happens again, we've got possibly an issue. Yeah, yeah, okay, good luck. So Charlene, there are many things I have had to do as an adult. <laughs> Adulting, yes. Yes, and one of the most surprisingly expensive and difficult things to do is get glasses. As someone who doesn't wear glasses, I'm always in awe of this. I'm in awe that something that 
I feel like a huge percentage of the population has to deal with, like certainly yeah. over 50%, right? Yeah. Whenever I see the cost of glasses plus prescription lenses, I'm like, what? Yeah, it's it's like breathing. Really, 50% is under, everyone eventually needs glasses. Mm -hmm. There's no 75-year-old person reading a book without reading glasses. Yeah, you keep telling sort. me that it's coming my way. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I can't wait. The slowest plate I told you so ever. And that's why we're such massive fans of Warby Parker. They've totally changed your glasses experience. And I think they've just sort of disrupted the entire glasses industry, if I'm honest. No question. So in case you don't know Warby Parker, they have everything you could possibly need for happier eyes. So this includes eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, eye exams, and you can shop for them both online and in stores. And glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. I don't know much about the price of glasses, but I know that that's an insane deal. Oh, as someone who knows a lot about glasses, it's a damn good deal. What I think really makes Warby Parker stand out from the rest is their at-home try-on kit. Because you may not live near a Warby Parker, even though there are tons of locations now, but maybe you don't even want to go to the Warby Parker. You don't want to have to make that trip. You can order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free and you just keep what you want and then pay for that or you can send them all back. So there's no commitment necessary and that way you can save yourself a trip. And I think it's really important from experience to try on glasses for a while mm. before you really know that you like them. That's a good point. It's sort of like trying on shoes, like walking around your house with yes. shoes on because sometimes those shoes you develop blisters yeah i love the idea of just wearing them around your house for a little while and figuring out if they go with all your outfits <laughs> so try warby parker's free home try on program order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free there's no obligation to buy it ships free and even includes a prepaid return shipping label try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash shandy hello is it fresh you're looking for? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. We're clearly talking about HelloFresh right now. Yeah. But we really do love HelloFresh. The best. We're not just pretending to love HelloFresh. We really do love it. And I think it's that time of year, actually, when it would be really handy to have all the ingredients to make a healthy and delicious meal in the comfort of your home without having to go out to venture out mm. to the grocery store during the holiday season. You know what one of my favorite things to do is? Well, not to do, but to happen. What? Is when I'm sitting on the couch and I'm working. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's almost lunchtime. And I walk over to the kitchen and I see a menu sitting there. Yeah, we, or keep, two. we keep our menus, our HelloFresh menus, because each recipe has its own individual card. Yeah. And we keep them in between the wall and the espresso machine. Yeah. And when I go over there and I see a menu, yeah. I'm so excited. Actually, it's so cute. You love to look at them and sort of choose. Like when there's when we have three or so, you're like, like mm, today I'll have the plot. Mm. So HelloFresh, I don't know who possibly wouldn't know HelloFresh by now, but they deliver fresh ingredients to your door and recipes so you can make great meals at home. It's a game changer. Oh, yeah. It has changed the way I grocery shop. I literally only buy groceries around our HelloFresh meals. It's one of the most life-changing things that has happened to us in the last <laughs> few years. It's true. I also think we're just the target demo. Like, we're both working. There are times where you just don't want to be like, what are we going to make for lunch? And I'm going to admit, I'm not the kind of person that has like a Rolodex of recipes I know by memory in my head. So it's just nice to have some guidance. Uh, there are three things I can say with 100% confidence. We have saved a lot of money. We have eaten a lot healthier. And I have learned how to cook. Mm -hmm. Also less food waste. Okay, well now, you know, you're taking <laughs> away from the impact of my three. <laughs> So go to HelloFresh.com slash Shandy18 and use code Shandy18 to get 18 free meals plus free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Shandy18, Shandy18, and use code Shandy18 to get 18 free meals plus free shipping. All right. This next question is from Anonymous. Dear Shandy. I am a 29-year-old woman living in a mid-sized city in the U.S. Since May 2021, I've been in a situationship with a man who is seven years younger than me. We worked together for several months before knowing each other's ages. I felt attracted to him for his dry and self-deprecating sense of humor and how articulate and perceptive he seemed to be. After I found out his age, I felt very confused and surprised by my attraction. I wasn't sure if I wanted to accept that I was into a guy so much younger than me, especially when the age difference is during our 20s. I like that she 
mention yeah, that. It's important. Yeah. If she was 60 and he was 53, yeah. it's like, who cares? Totally. After about seven months, I eventually did make a move on him by confessing my feelings and going for a kiss, which he reciprocated. For a long time, he was staying the night at my place once a week. We still see each other on a somewhat regular basis, but sometimes the visits now stretch to two weeks. Unfortunately, oh. over this time period, I found myself seeking a great deal of reassurance from him. I always have a great time when we hang out together, but during our time apart, I've been feeling an increasing amount of anxiety. I started feeling so uncertain about how he feels about me. In the past, when I brought up my concerns to him, he has made me feel reassured that he does have feelings for me, he loves me, and that he, quote, sees a future where we are dating, but that he is, quote, not sure when that would be. He... <laughs> That's great. Oftentimes your laughter just makes me laugh. That's contagious. Yeah. That's yeah. A good laugh track. You laughing just now, it, it made me realize how funny that is. It is I shouldn't funny. find it funny. It's not funny, but all all comedy in some way is based in tragedy. Yes. That's yep. why it's funny. It, yep. it breaks tension. He has not told his parents about me. This has bothered me when I've stopped to think about it. His explanation is that he wants to keep certain things private from them and that he thinks them knowing about it could ruin things. He lives with his parents, by the way, mm. though he is moving out next month. Oh, you shrugged at that? I think that's... Uh, 22? No, it's not that he lives with them. It's that they... She's been in a situation with him since May 2021. He lives with his parents and hasn't told them about her. Yeah, that part. I I, that, I was given that that was messed <laughs> okay. up. Okay, okay. Yeah, I thought you were giving me eyes about the t living with his oh, parents. Oh, no, 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 at 22 no, no. nowadays, that's like yeah. you start living with your parents at 22 in America. <laughs> He is a sexually fluid person who is mainly into women, but also to a lesser degree, feminine men. I mention this only because part of me wonders if he is still exploring his sexuality and perhaps considers me too basic, a very cis woman. He has had sex with 11 people, including me, last time we discussed the topic on numbers, and I've had sex with seven, including him. I remember that early on, he said something like, quote, he would be satisfied with the experience he's had up until this point in response to me expressing concern about him wanting to explore other people due to his age. He tells me he loves me pretty regularly, calls me baby, makes me feel beautiful, and says he sees a future where we are dating, but that he is unsure of when that would be. <laughs> he also said on several occasions that he feels I'm out of his league. Anyway, last week I proposed we take a break because the situation has been becoming increasingly painful for me. Good for her. Yeah. Being with someone who won't define the relationship. Oh, she used DTR and I'm proud of myself. Mm, nice. <laughs> That's a real throwback. That might have been our first Q&A ever. Yeah. What did I say? Down to rock? <laughs> God, I'm an idiot. Being with someone who won't define the relationship feels like a sick form of rejection, and it's something I had never experienced before. The break felt necessary because I keep having these anxious feelings every single week leading up to us potentially hanging out, wondering if he's thinking about me, wondering if he wants to see me, etc. My Thanksgiving was very lonely, and I had to be at work that day. I had a moment of weakness. I have had many with this guy, and I texted him and told him that I actually did want to see him, but I wasn't sure if I should stick to what I had originally set, which was taking a break. His response was, oh, really? Mm. When I read this, I felt happy because, oh, really? It sounds like excitement or intrigue to me. I responded, yeah. And he said, I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting to hear that. I asked him if he thinks we should stick to what we originally discussed, the break, and he said, I don't know. He then said it wasn't a good time to discuss, which I understand since he was with family for Thanksgiving. This is where we currently are on a break of sorts, but I'm waiting to hear back from him on whether or not he wants to stay on the break or not. I haven't slept with any other guys since 2019, except one one night stand in 2020. I honestly, in my soul right now, just have no desire to date anyone else, which is making letting go of this so hard. The thought of getting to know another guy in this way sounds so unappealing to me. I just don't understand why someone would tell you they love you, that they see a future dating you, spend the night with you on a regular basis for a year and a half, say that you're out of their league and not want to make the relationship official. I know why. Do you want me to get to the end? Sure. I am sure this sounds like absolute dumpster fire. I am ashamed of this entire situation, but very much in my feelings. Shandy, 
If you choose to respond to my situation, can you please help me snap out of this, hopefully providing some insight into this guy's behavior and what he's potentially thinking or feeling? I really want to understand him. I listened to your first few episodes back in 2020, but then somehow temporarily forgot about the podcast. So around the time I made a move on this guy, I had not heard of Andy's theory about a man not being a real man until age 36, nor the significance of being pursued by a man. Thank you, Anonymous. I'm glad she got back on the shanty train. So we, by the way, this email came in. We saw this email come in together. Mm-hmm. I just want to mention this email was sent at 1230 at night on Thanksgiving. Mm. Anonymous. Okay. She said she wanted to, to be snapped out of this. Do you want to let her rip, Andy? The answer to all of this is 22. Sure, but I actually think his behavior is universal. You could meet a 38-year-old guy who also does this. But it's, a, it's a nice blanket. Yeah. This is a 22 blanket. Sure. Okay, I'll, I'll let you have that. He is, wow. There are so many things wrong with this situation, Anonymous. It's almost like, I think we don't even know where to start. Yeah, it, it, it's a good place to start to say that you should move on. Yeah. And you should move on with prejudice And I don't mean that in a way that this guy's a bad guy. I think for yourself, you should move on with dedication to moving on as opposed to taking a break. Definitely. I think taking a break more often than not is kind of like a half-assed way of, you're not really doing what you should be doing. You're not committing fully, like you said. It's like she's no. just trying to rip off the Band-Aid slowly and then put it back on. But what's interesting is that she's trying to rip the Band-Aid off slowly, but then she goes to him to put it back on. Yeah. It's there's a power differential that oh, doesn't work. She's on given top him of a lot of other problems. The amount of power he has in this situation is like very upsetting to me. It bothered me that she's the one who was like, "Okay, we're going to take a break." And then on Thanksgiving, he's like, "Oh, really?" And she's like, "Do you think we should stick with what we decided?" It's like, "You decided it. Commit to that. Commit to what you decided." There was a reason you asked for a break, a moment of loneliness. And admittedly, a lonely holiday is, is rough. But that's why breakups aren't easy. You know, this the, the loneliness is what makes of breakups course. difficult. I it's, would go as far as saying that if you write into a podcast about a relationship problem after midnight on Thanksgiving, that relationship is probably over. Yes. And the timeline here, May 2021, he lives with his parents, no judgment there, but Mm. the fact that they don't even know about her, he can picture himself dating her, date, it's not marrying, he can picture himself dating her, but but, but he doesn't know when, oh my God, the more I think about this. This is why I say 22, because I don't even think this is a bad guy necessarily. Mm. I think he's 22 and he literally, think about it, think of, let's just make it extreme. Let's say he's seven. (laughs) <laughs> okay he's seven he lives with his parents okay and he has some friend at school who's like like the bully okay he's like a friend that his parents wouldn't approve of okay he's not going to tell his parents about it he's mm-hmm. like think of a seven-year-old he's like i'm not telling my parents about this friend i think you should go more with like age 13 because i think seven you're not really thinking in terms like that like you're you still see your parents as like rock stars when you're seven Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah he's like a little bratty 13 year old. <laughs> little bratty. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, the whole thing about not calling it dating, he could see it becoming dating one day. That sounds like a little baby. It's it sounds true. like I want to, to hold your hand and one day yeah. I want to be. I'll call you your my girlfriend boyfriend. one day. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just a child. Yes. It's ridiculous. Yes. One day he could maybe see them dating. In dating. But he doesn't know when that would be. And he doesn't know when that uh, would be. Oh, how convenient. So another qualifier. Yes. I mean, look, are there some 22-year-olds in this country yeah. or in the world that are perfectly ready and fine Absolutely. and mature? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is this one of them? No. no. Get on with it. Oh, my God. Get out there. Meet other people. One day, maybe this Cinderella story will come home. No, I don't know. It's, this don't Cinderella care. story is never, ever, ever, ever Ever, ever happening, Anonymous. This is not happening. That was eight ever? The fact that, (laughs) you know, it says a lot that she asked for a break. He didn't try to stop her from what, you know, I have a feeling she's keeping track of everything he's saying. You know, she's got quotes. When we talked about her numbers back back then, she doesn't know what his number is now. 
She's just spending so much time just twiddling her thumbs, uh, you, waiting, you, hoping, wondering. You know, she said something in this that I hate to bring up because it's kind of beating a dead horse or, or adding insult to injury is yeah. more appropriate. But she said she was ashamed. And I honestly think a healthy dose of shame might mm. be a good thing in this situation. Yes. Might be enough to really get you over the hump. And I think you might want to sit with that shame a little bit. Not judging you. No. At oh, we all. talk about shame There's all the no time. No judgment. If I have shame we are, every day. We are the poster children of shame. Yeah. And actually, I would say shame. You're right. Shame could be the driving force yes. in causing her to really end this. You're embarrassed by the situation because it's wrong. Yeah, you know it's wrong. You know it's your, you. your body and mind is feeling shame for a reason. Yes. This is shameful in its own way. And again, on the scale of shame, this is very low. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is if you do feel that shame, that's a helpful tool yes. to really embrace. Instead because of sweeping the shame under the rug in favor of loneliness, yes. sweep the loneliness under the rug in favor of the shame. <laughs> That sounds really messed up, but yeah, I actually no. think it'll help her in the long run. It's, it's, it's well spoken. I, I think shame is often a very, it's probably a millions and millions of year old human emotion. Mm. And I think it's there for survival. I think there are certain things that you feel shame about because otherwise you would constantly do things that screw up your life. Mm -hmm. Like I, one out of 10 times when I feel shame, it actually hurts me. Yeah. Because I have a heavy amount of shame. Yeah. It gets in the way. Like I can't perform well yeah. because I feel ashamed. I feel like a hack. Mm. But 99% of the time is great. Like I'll go out, have a few drinks like last <laughs> night. Yeah. And I'll come home and I'll wake up in the morning and be like, I feel good because the shame that I feel in life stopped me from doing some really dumb stuff. Mm. I think if everyone in this world had a lot more shame, mm -hmm. it'd be a way better place to live. If you don't feel shame, you are shameless. No one likes shameless people. Shameless is a bad word. Mm. And when was the last time someone was called shameless and it was a compliment? <laughs> is it? Well, sometimes shameless people get ahead, but... I don't think that that's what anyone well, should be no modeling one, their behavior no one after. No one should base that on, on how they should behave. Okay, so there's one paragraph here that I want to address. She says, I just don't understand why someone would tell you they love you, that they see a future dating you, spend the night with you on a regular basis for a year and a half, 22, say that you're 22, out of their league and not want to make 22, the relationship 22, official. 22, 22, 22. Yeah, and okay, 22. Like, it's almost too much of an excuse for this guy. But I do think that a lot of guys don't understand like it's almost like they believe it in the moment while they're saying it but this is a classic words versus action yep. situation show don't tell show don't tell this guy is showing you where you rank for him yeah. he don't listen to what he's telling you you know by now that doesn't mean shit i'm sorry march 2021 he hasn't told his parents about if she you walked up to the door and knocked on the door the parents would call the police <laughs> a year and a half a year and a half. Okay. And so what I don't want you to hover too much on anonymous here is like, you know, he's, she says that he has said on occasion that he feels she's out of his league. I'm sorry. Guys say shit like oh, this. That's just BS. That's like saying it's not you. It's me. Yes. It's bullshit. And I'm not saying that you're not out of his league anonymous, but I don't believe that he necessarily thinks that because if he truly felt that you were out of his league, he would hold yeah. on to you in every way he could. And if you wrote him after asking for a break, he'd be like, oh my God, I'm so happy. Yeah, yes, let's please like, let's get back together. You're the best I'm ever going to do. I'm like, I can't live without you. Yeah. Not well, like, I, oh I, I yeah, I don't know. I couldn't agree more. Oh my God. Work with that shame and move onwards i actually think all the other stuff about you know he's a sexually fluid person he might want to explore more all of that is absolutely moot all of the things she said all of them are deal breakers yes not telling the parents yeah. i don't know when it's going to be but one day i could envision yeah. us maybe dating yeah yeah <laughs> i could say that about anybody i could say that about my next door neighbor yeah <laughs> it's true. i mean seriously the fact that you laughed when you when I read that, yeah, it's you laughable. Laugh. It's laughable. It sounds like it it's honestly. A, it sounds like a seven year old. Yes, it's so non committal that it sounds like a child said it. Yeah. A child who doesn't tell his parents about things he thinks are bad. Yeah, things he thinks are not worthy of telling his parents, but he's going to get scolded. Yeah, or punished, or he's not proud of them. Mm -hmm. No, this is bad no. news. Okay. <laughs> Anonymous, you said, please help me snap out of this. I hope this helped. Yeah. Please. Just, snap out of it. Yeah. Oh, before, because you <laughs> stopped. Wait, that was a bad snap. 
good. That was a good snap. It really oh. just comes to how clammy you your just got to be are. loose, though. Everything's loose. You got to be loose. That's why you can't whistle. You're too tight. <laughs> <laughs> I can do my loon call, though. No, I can't even do that. Oh, my God. <laughs> so Talk sad. about shame. <laughs> Okay, what I was going to say on a closing statement here, because she said that she first listened to the podcast in 2020 and then forgot about us, and now she's circled back. I think what you missed in that time in between, we talked about the gray zone. Mm. Has there ever been a more textbook example of the gray zone than this? This is gray. This is the gray in the paint store. This mm-hmm. is just gray. Oh yeah, it does. It's not. Yeah, it's not like slate smoke gray, or charcoal. smoke gray, no. charcoal gray. Yeah. It's this is cloud gray. Yeah, yeah. Storm, <laughs> rain, <laughs> sleet, <laughs> gunmetal. Andy gray. That's yeah. <laughs> you don't like that? No. I think you have a distinct gray. I love your gray. Yeah. Yeah. You know there is no gray hair. Did you know that? I know it's just black and it's white. It's black and white. Yeah. yeah. What I was going to say is you are smack dab in the middle of the gray zone, meaning not only are you not getting commitment from someone who you clearly want commitment from and who's stringing you along, but crucially, you said you're not open to dating other people. You don't want to meet anyone else. It sounds very unappealing to go out there and meet someone else in the way that you know this person. That is what's dangerous yeah, about this. Yeah. If she were also out there sewing her wild oats, dating yeah. and, and keeping her options open and going out on a Friday night, she's just waiting at home, wanting to know if he wants to see her. Oh my God. Textbook gray zone, get out of the gray zone. Go on dates yeah. with other people. It'll be good for you. I agree. And don't make this guy a play thing. Don't think you can handle that because I don't think you can. No, There's too much emotion here. Yeah. You're not going to keep this guy on the side and be like, oh, I'll date, but he'll be on the side. No. I Clean think- cut. You can maybe stay friends with them one day, but not now. No friends, yeah. no play, nothing. Mm-hmm. I do think some people can handle that, but I feel strongly that she no, cannot. No, she can't. Yeah. I don't feel good about yeah. it. Yeah. All right, Anonymous. Sorry. Good luck. You are going to need it because this is going to be hard. Hard. No one's pretending this isn't this hard, is... but breakups are hard. And that's what this is. It's not a break. It's a break up. It's an ending because they're not dating yet. It's just an ending. You're right. <laughs> you can only break up an actual relationship. Yeah. They're just, you're right. It's just a thing that ends. Yeah. All right. I think that's a wrap then, Andy. For this I made Q&A. it. You did. I'm proud of you. Yeah. You're also and less of a bass. A little like become a bass baritone. No, you were a bass baritone at the beginning. Now, oh, now you're I'm like, a baritone. Yeah. Yeah. A, a very resonant baritone. Yeah. Oh, I miss my bass days. <laughs> I can tell you're leaning into it. Yeah. I miss my yeah. bass days. I still, I can still pull it out. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, if you enjoyed what you heard today, you know we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify (laughs) podcast ratings and reviews, and generally do all of the things that you would do to support a podcast that you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. Dear Shandy.